Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling fruit. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. To circle through the kitchen. He'll be back. Uncle Jed! Granny! Ellie Mae! Uncle Jed! Granny! Ellie Mae! Uncle Jed! Did I hear Jethro calling? Yes, I'm Granny. He's circling through the house looking for us. Best clear the doorway, Granny. He'll come tearing through there any minute. No, he won't. I just scrubbed the library floor and locked the door so nobody could track us. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Jed! Granny! <laughs> Listen, greatest news for you. I'm going to be on death row. You just busted through a door. I did? I wondered what that noise was. <laughs> Let me tell you about the news. I finally decided on my life's calling. Again? This time it's for sure. I mean, this job is a natural. Well, what is it? I'm going to be a five-star general. <laughs> general? Five-star general. That's the highest they is. Well, I thought you had your heart set on being a double-note spy. Not no more. Why, everybody in their dog has took up spying. But there's only one or maybe two five-star generals in the whole country. And you think you can be one, huh? Well, Uncle Jed, I'm cut out for it. Well, I got everything it takes. Leadership ability, a cool, alert mind, and unusual intelligence. Jed, this is all that is worth saving of that door. The rest is just killing. Yeah, Jethro's kind of wrought up. He just stumbled onto his last calling again. What is it this time? I'm going to be a general in the Army. Not ours, I hope. <laughs> Found some more, Granny. Here, boy. Fill the door around this stuff. I can't right now, Granny. Got to commence packing for West Point. West Point? What's that? Well, that's where you learn to be a general. It's what you call a military school. Are you aiming to spend the rest of your life in school? You done graduated from the sixth grade. <laughs> but at West Point, you learned soldiering, too. I like the boy's been studying up on the place. Uh, whereabouts is this West Point? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, how do you expect to find it? Well, I don't know that either. Well, even if you do find it, how do you know they'll take you in? Because like I told you, I got everything they's looking for. Leadership ability, a cool, alert mind, and now, unusual intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just so we can write your maw, maybe we better find out a little more about this West Point. Well, maybe Mr. Drysdale can help us. Likely he could. Let's go see him. Oh, can I go to West Point, too? Ellie Mae, West Point is full of soldiers. Well, Pop, can I go to West Point, too? Forget it, Ellie. What a bunch of soldiers gonna want with a girl around? <laughs> I just got to have a talk with that boy. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Drydale's asleep. No, no, he's just relaxing. After lunch, he likes to put a soothing pack on his eyes. <laughs> Chief. Mr. Drysdale. Gina. Chief, wake up. Huh? Oh, what a wonderful dream. I was all alone with Gina Lola Bridget, huh? Gee, she made a half a million dollar deposit. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clambert, Jethro, come in. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Dryden. No, no, it's always a pleasure. What can I do for you? 
Well, uh, Jethro here has got a favor he'd like to ask you. Well, you just ask away anything at all. I'd like to go to West Point. Well, that's no problem. West Point? <laughs> you, Jethro? Why, ain't it a good school? <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the finest schools in the world. Well, boy, it looks like you made a good choice. Can you fix it for him to get in, Mr. Drysdale? Well, Mr. Clavett, in order for a young man to enter West Point, he has to have, it, it must... <laughs> Explain, Miss Hathaway. Well, well, first of all, the scholastic requirements for qualification are exceedingly stringent. He, he must have a great deal of academic preparation. Are you saying it takes a heap of schooling to get in? Exactly. Well, boy, here you're sticking with it clean through the sixth grade. It's finally going to pay off. <laughs> Explain further, Miss Hathaway. Why does it have to be West Point? Well, Jethro uh, would like to learn soldiering. He's got his heart set on being a general. A general? Five-star general. That's as high as you can go without being president. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to West Point to learn soldiering, but there's, there's an excellent military academy right here in Beverly Hills, Havenhurst. How's that sound to you, boy? Well, gee, I kind of got my heart set on going to West Point. But Havenhurst is so handy. West Point is 3,000 miles away. 3,000? Gee, if I went there, I'd just about have to give up Granny's cooking, wouldn't I? <laughs> Would be a long way to tote lunch, yeah. <laughs> Can I get to be a five-star general at Havenhurst? Believe me, Jethro, you have a better chance there than you would have at West Point. <laughs> OK, I'll go. Well, thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Uh, Jethro and me will go over and get him joined up. No, let me prepare them first. I mean, I want to see if they're prepared to give Jethro the finest military training. Shucks, it don't have to be so fine, just so long as I can get to be a five-star general. <laughs> well, let me take care of everything, and I'll keep in touch with you. Right. Well, uh, thank you kindly. Bye, Miss Jean. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Well, Chief, you've done it again. Just my usual quick thinking. I mean, got yourself out on a limb. Havenhurst happens to be a very exclusive institution with high academic standards. Well, so is Potts School. I got them through that. Only by threatening to foreclose the mortgage. <laughs> Do I have a mortgage on Havenhurst? I'm afraid not. Mm, so it'll be a little tougher. Call the commandant and make an appointment. Well, what time? Well, it's up to you. Go as soon as you can. <laughs> you expect me to try and get Jethro into Havenhurst? Would you rather try to get him into West Point? Well, of course not, but, but I don't see why it should be my responsibility. Miss Hathaway, how often do I have to explain to you the workings of the corporate structure? I make the executive decisions, you expedite them. I paint the big picture, you fill in the details. I create the master plan, you blueprint them. I... You put your foot in it. I pull it out. Exactly. <laughs>
I'm staying out of it. Oh, yeah, I gotta remember that. Forty acres of weeds from the poorhouse window is a mighty sad end. Hello? Jethro says he's going to a military school right here in Beverly Hills. Yep. Just a minute, Ellie. Your pa wants to ask me something. No, I don't. Well, that's your worry. I'm staying out. You don't? <laughs> it's school called Havenhurst, Ellie. According to Mr. Drysdale, it's a dandy. Well, can I go over there with him? And maybe I can meet some fellas. Sitting in the poorhouse window. That's where Pearl's gonna be. What's she talking about? She let us know. Well, uh, quick as uh, Jethro gets acquainted, he'll likely fetch some fellas home with him. Looking out at her 40 acres of weeds. <laughs> what does that mean? There's a way to find out quick. Come on, Ellie, let's go call Mr. Drysdale. Cause her only boy won't be coming home to work them 40 acres that she's always counted on. He'll be going to school learning to be a Beverly Hills general. <laughs> Pearl sold off them 40 acres of weeds five years ago and made a pot full of money. Well, that's your worry. I'm, I'm staying, staying out of it. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> what do you mean you couldn't get him in? Now, I gave my word to Jed Clampett, and when I give my word, I expect you to keep it. Well, I did my best, Chief. I pleaded with the Commandant, but he was adamant. Jethro will have to come in for a personal interview and take the standard entrance examination. Baloney! The commandant said... Oh, not to the commandant. He's used to pushing little kids around. Well, let's see what happens when somebody looks him in the eye and tells him where to head in. Now, get back there and try it. I'm going to lunch. Chief, <laughs> please. What now, Miss Hathaway? What now? I have told you what to do and how to do it. What more do you want? I want you to do it. After all, it was your idea. Well, there you are. I've done the executive thinking. I've created the master plan. Now, it's up to you. Chief, we have been through that. I am not going back. Are you disobeying a direct order? Yes. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, need I remind you that it's almost Christmas bonus time? Mr. Drysdale, I have been with you for 10 years, and you have never yet given anyone a Christmas bonus. Well, is this any way to get me to start? <laughs> All right, I'll do it myself. If you need me, I'll be at Havenhurst, in the office of the Commandant, chewing him out. Come in. Set Captain Harry Hogan reporting his orders, sir. At ease, Captain Hogan. Now then, as you know, in the forthcoming tactical field exercises, Havenhurst will be opposing Lexington Academy. Yes, sir. We will be the Blue Army, they will be the Red Army. Yes, sir. Captain Hogan, I have chosen you to take personal command of the first squad, which will spearhead our defense of Beverly Hills. Thank you, sir. You deserve it. Your grades have been outstanding. Now then, step around here and we'll discuss tactics. Yes, sir. Now, the Red Army, Lexington, will be coming in through Franklin Canyon will launch their simulated attack in this sector. Now, we will have to find a suitable defense perimeter somewhere around here. Uh, let me get another map, and I can give you the grid coordinates. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's get something straight. But, sir... You speak when I give you permission. <laughs> no, I have a boy I went enrolled in this school. And don't give me any hogwash about entrance exams and personal interviews. Is that clear? Perfectly. Hey, kid, your voice is changing. Who are you, sir, and what do you want? Oh, but you're... The, he's the... Oh, I guess I must have missed him. Yes, you did. I am Colonel Hollis. I'm Melvin Drysdale, sir. Any matters involving enrollment must come through me. Couldn't I talk to him? He seems very confident. What? Well, I know how busy you are, sir, running this fine school. I believe I heard you say that our entrance requirements were hogwash. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> I was just joking with the little nipper. Oh, he's a fine lad. The boy you mentioned must come in for a personal interview and take an entrance examination. Oh, yes, sir. 
He's a fine lad, too. Oh, you'll like him, sir. How old is he? Well, he's kind of big for his age. <laughs> nice, tall, husky boy. Been to elementary school. Oh, what is he? Nine, ten? Oh, no, he's not that tall. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to take my word about him. Just go ahead and enroll him. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thirteen hundred dollars. Yes, sir. I know what that means. I was in the service myself. Quartermaster Corps. Corporal. <laughs> you know, I, I remember one time... You are dismissed, Corporal. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Jane. Hear the news? Mr. Drysdale's getting me into the Havenhurst Military Academy. Here you are, Jethro. Use my office to change your clothes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations, Chief. How did you do it? Easy. The minute I walked into the Commandant's office, I took charge. I didn't let him bluff me like he did you. But he seems so stern, so forceful. You know, you're like a lot of civilians, cowed by a uniform, but not me. I walked over to his desk, I picked up his nameplate, and I said, see here, Hollis, let's get something straight. And he said, but sir, and I said, you speak when I give you permission. Yes, sir, that, that took a lot of courage. Bah, don't forget, I was in the Army myself for four years. I can't wait to see Jethro in his uniform. Oh, there's plenty of time for that. Have you been to lunch? No, not yet. Well, you better go now. Take an extra long one, half hour. Thank you. Okay. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Ready, Jethro? Fine, fine. Mr. Drysdale, are you sure this is what I'm supposed to wear? For the personal interview with Colonel Hollis, yes. Now, let's see you march the way I showed you. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. Excellent. All right, let's go. Oh, you better put this around you before we get to Havenhurst. Well, I'll be glad when I get my uniform. I sure don't feel much like a five-star general with this on. <laughs> Drysdale, I'd like to see you alone. I, I didn't know he was that big old man. He sure fooled me. <laughs> if you will, please. <laughs> Gee, I was embarrassed when I saw him wearing that outfit. But you know how it is. Some parents try to keep their children from growing up. Someone should tell his they lost. <laughs> Well, obviously, he doesn't fit the Havenhurst image. Well, 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 he could get used to marching like this. <laughs> well, well, how did he do in the entrance exam? We, uh, we didn't get that far. During the interview, it came out that his uncle's estate is located right here on this high ground overlooking Franklin Canyon. Oh, yes, he owns 12 acres right along that ridge. Perfect defensive terrain. Why, from this position, we could pin down their assault, counterattack on the flank, and save Beverly Hills. Save Beverly Hills? What? Lexington Military Academy. Every year, we oppose them in tactical field exercises, and they've beaten us nine years in a row. Oh, I see. But with the Clampett Estate as our defensive perimeter, why, the referees would give us the victory on strategy alone. That's very interesting. <laughs> sit down, Drysdale. Let's talk. No, you sit down. I'll talk. Now, see here, Hollis. Let's get something straight. For me, ready. Oh, good, you're ready. Yeah, Pop. Is Jethro here with them soldiers? Must be. I just seen a bus come through the gate. A bus? Looks like he fetched home a whole gaggle of them, honey. Now, hold on, Ellie. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, it ain't seemly for a girl to appear eager. But I am, Pop. We know that, child, but a girl has to follow certain rules. Now, when them soldiers come, you'll be sitting in the parlor playing the organ, just like you wasn't expecting company at all. Well, we ain't got no organ. They play the piano. But I don't know how. <laughs> Ellie, just sit there. I know the U.S. Army. One look at you, 
and them soldiers will hear music whether you're playing or not. <laughs> Soldiers come? Yeah. Take a look at the size of them. They's a bunch of runts. Bodie, I said shoulder arms. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, you just would make three of any one of them. Yeah. The army must be awful hard up to take them that size. Well, hey! <laughs> Bodie. Yeah. Oh, you want me to turn around, huh? If you don't mind. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed! Granny, look at me! I'm in the Army! Bodie, you're out of attention. Well, that's my Uncle Jed and Granny. They live here. Quiet! <laughs> Mr. Clampett, sir, Captain Hogan, commanding the first squad able company. Well, howdy, Captain. Uh, this here is Granny. Ma'am, how old are you, Sonny? Nine. Nine? <laughs> well, almost. Has Colonel Hollis arrived, sir? No, you're the first ones to get here. Then I'll take charge and deploy my men along the defense perimeter. We're expecting the offensive to begin at exactly 1,500 hours. <laughs> Poor little fella. Ain't even old enough to tell time. <laughs> Jethro, is these real soldiers? I'll say. He's going to defend Beverly Hills against the Red Army. <laughs> the dickens you say? Mr. Clampett, sir, I must ask you not to converse with my troops. Well, I'm uh, sorry, Captain, but my nephew here just told me that the Red Army is coming. That's right, sir. All civilians will please stay out of the battle area. Look! Hey! Well, excuse me, Captain, but uh, is this all the army you got? No, sir. Two more squads on the way. Port! Well, uh, uh, excuse me again, Captain, but is the fellers in them other two squads any older? No, sir. This is the senior squad. We're spearheading the defense. <laughs> Double time! Hey, hey, something else? <laughs> hey, wait for me! <laughs> Granny, I don't know how much of that you heard, but Beverly Hills is in a heap of trouble. <laughs> Setting it to Pa Annie. Where's all them soldiers? Forget it, Ellie. They's too little for girls. Oh, shucks. It don't matter. Even if they was big enough, they ain't got the time. Them youngins is gonna have their hands full. <laughs> Out caps. I'm gonna do some shooting now. Bonnie! What you want? Come here. But I ain't had a chance. Quiet! To... <laughs> you big meathead. You goof up once more, and I'll bust you solo. You have to salute civilians. <laughs> do you read me, Bodie? Well, uh, I hear you if that's what you mean. Okay, sir. We got the Red Army on the run. After the main time attack. And you, Bodie, bring ammo on a double. How's it going, Jethro? We got the whole Red Army on the run. Here, Uncle Jed, take my gun. I got to pass out ammo to the troops. <laughs> All right, doggies, Granny. We don't have to worry about the U.S. Army. They is little but uncommon spunky. What you mean? Them young'uns is whipping the whole Red Army with nothing but cap guns. <laughs> Well, now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <music> you.